Hello. Today I'd like to do something a little different. I would like to show you this little journal that I made. Very small. So a flip through and then a how to. This was made using something that I'd had in my desk for probably who. 20 years and this was a package of stationery and once the stationery was used up I couldn't get rid of this packaging it was just too cute so what I did is I made a junk journal out of it recently added a couple of handmade buttons or pardon me beads that I made out of fabric samples added some beads on the end sewed it together instead of having more than one layer since it was so thick to begin with I just folded over the edges, cut them with my um, pinking shears to give it a little bit of a flare there, and then sewed. Included a pocket here, and added some magazine picture here, made a journal card out of a piece of calendar, it's tea dyed. did some of my own stamping, made my own little labels, which I need to make some more. I'm running out of them. Another little pocket and here as well. Just made from scraps. This is made from a day book. This is a Daphne's Diary Butterfly, so this journal will not be able to be for sale because you're not supposed to sell things that have things that come from Daphne's Diary. Definitely an inspiring magazine. Some paper doily there. Some tea dyeing using a plastic doily there. Just a little bit of scraps in the corner. Envelope turned into a flip out with some journaling space inside. Tea dyed. Little card there and right there as well. Some hand dyed paper. Scrapbook paper there. I save all my scraps, as you can tell. <laughs> That's for my scrap basket. This one here, which I've shown before. Tuck spot. This is from Daphne's Diary. This is from an old envelope. And this was made from an old card. This is vintage paper that's a bit fragile, so I added some washi tape to it. Belly band with the blank card. Journaling. Magazine picture. Full stamp. Another full stamp made into a tuck spot. A card that's been covered with some napkin. Lots of journaling space. Three little tags here added to a piece of envelope that I turned into a pocket. More tags here. I think this is a piece of book page that I turned into a pocket. I think I stamped this. Another little tuck spot here. A little mini journal card and a bow pin with some beads that match the colors on this page. Another tag made out of a piece of calendar page. So I hope this inspires you to make something out of maybe some special packaging you have that you just can't seem to uh, part with. 
I'm really glad I did this. I mean, I might end up end up giving this away, but speaking of giveaways, I hope you've um, watched the previous video because I have a giveaway and it's really easy. The directions are at the beginning of the video, they're in the notes, and they're at the end of the video. Now, I'd like to do a how-to. I haven't done this before on camera, so we'll see how it goes. But Roxy's creation inspired this because she showed how to turn an envelope into a little journal spot. And so after having watched hers, I did my own, but of course it's not the same because, well, I don't know if you're like me, but I use tutorials as a, a jumping off point to inspire me to find uh, my own vision of what I want to make. And so that's what I did. Here's the larger one I made. This was made using little bits and stuff from here. It's a tuck spot. So you can journal on the back as well. And I also made a little one. No different. Oh, there's a piece of lace there. That would be too tempting for one of my cats to eat, so I always have to throw things in the garbage right away. Which actually does me good because then I can't let this get too messy in here. Anyways, they're both different. So, I mean, there's just no end to ways you could decorate these little envelope booklets. So I would like to make one now on camera. I've got a medium size envelope compared to the other two. It's not tiny and it's not big. The first thing I did when I made them, the other one, was to remove one of the side pockets. And so I think I'll do that, make sure that's... And of course I'll use this paper that I remove for a different project. Or who knows, if I'd end up on this one. I'll set that aside. And then what I'm going to do is grab a seed, old seed catalog to use as a gluing surface. And I'm going to pick out, let's see, I want to pick out a piece of scrap of paper. I like this one and it's tea dyed already. Yeah, I want to use this one. And I'm going to glue it onto the flap, but I'm not going to glue it like straight up against the seam, the join there. Because I want to give it a little teeny bit of room so that it opens and closes easy. So the first thing I'll do is put on some glue stick. So that kind of grabs right away. And then I use some you know, use tacky glue, which is not in the proper bottle, because I find this one is a nice handy one to use. I just keep refilling it. And keep that upside down over here. Take my paper, put it up here. Rub it on and uh, turn it over. Aha! So I can see now where I need to trim. Hopefully, I won't do what I did in a earlier attempt at filming this, which I think I might share as a blooper. Anyways, you'll know what I mean when. And if you see it and if I post it. So I'm going to cut this the same. Got it lined up. I had this cutter for about 20 years ago at a garage sale. Now you can see where it goes there. So I'll fold it. I keep it up on my, my highest shelf when I'm not using it. Very stiff, it doesn't fall down on its own, thankfully. You could just use scissors, but I um I really really like using my my cutter. Now I cut a little bit too much, so I'm gonna 
fudge it there and fold this down a little bit. There. Now the next thing I'm going to do, put this away and get out my pinking shears because I like this idea that I thought of when I was making my the second one and that is rather than leaving the whole flap on because I don't need it, I cut with pinking shears. It looks cute. What you see of it even after you glue the other paper on. Yeah, and it gives more unbumpy writing space. Set that aside and I can go my scrap bin. Now, I want to choose a piece of cardstock to go here. I think, did I choose one yet? Uh, looks like I didn't, so I need to go find some. I'll be right back. Great. Now i got to decide. <laughs> the nice thing is they're all tea dyed. So let's see what, what kind of goes with that a little bit. So these little bunnies are awfully sweet. The colors. Hmm. So that's a maybe. So I'll set that aside. And that kind of picks up some of the purple that's in it. This little deer is sweet. Looks kind of Christmassy. And I'm not wanting this to be a Christmas one. And that's nice too. Well, I think I'm going to choose this one. So, you'll see in a minute why I'm going to do it this way, but I'm going to glue this there and there. So I'll get my gluing magazine back and add some glue here and here. And I'm just remembering something. I want to... So that is where I'm going to probably use it. I want to fold this paper where, yeah, so I know the half way spot on it. And you'll see why when we get to that stage. There, so now I can see where the halfway mark is. Add some tacky glue. And I could have cut these straighter, but they're not very noticeable. And I'm just learning more and more that uh, being a perfectionist or trying to be one just makes me freeze up too much. Like I tried to put together stuff to do, a tutorial, two other times, and uh, the perfectionism just got in the way and stopped me in my tracks. Today I'm saying no to that. And okay, I see that that little fudging I did over there. Did it move back? It slipped back. So let's stop him. There we go. Okay, we fix that wagon. So same thing again. I can trim using the guillotine or I can trim using my paper scissors. Paper scissors this time. There we go. So I did the same thing too. What I did with this, I didn't go too close to the edge. See how there's a little bit of space in there, and that's because I'm going to add a piece of paper, a one, <laughs> a one paper signature. And because I've got this fold line here, I know that I can cut down the middle and I'll have created, ta-da, a hidden journal spot, kind of. And I saved myself a butterfly from when I was making the other ones. 
so I could put it there. Yeah, so I think I'll I'll cut that butterfly out now. Would I want to use something else as a closure just to be different than the other ones? That would work. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to use the butterfly? I want to use the butterfly. Yeah. Get some more practice at my at my cutting. Fussy cutting. Remember, Wendy, to move the paper and not the scissors. I don't know how I used to fussy cut before because now I'm so focused on remembering to do it this way because it works for me. But I don't know. Maybe I've always done it this way. I don't know. What Do you move your scissors or do you move the paper? I definitely think that there's no right and wrong way for most things in crafting because, pardon my cat, because, oh good, I left her basket empty, so hopefully she'll go in there. Yep, she's going in there. What a nice little kitty you are, you are. What a nice little kitty you are. Yeah, there's no right or wrong in most things to do with crafting, creating. If there's anything that'll make me run and hide, it's legalism in faith things or in craft things. No, just let let me let me go the way I was made to go. Yeah, to be led by love in life, and yeah, led by joy in crafting. I think I better make sure I glue the antennae up on the upper part like that. Right, same with the body. But before we do that, I want to ink it up a bit. I'm an inker. This is my homemade inker. I really like this old bobbin or Oh, is that what I'm? Is that the right thing to call it? Oh no, spool. I really like this really old thread spool, and so when I needed to make myself a dauber, ink dauber like this, I grabbed this one. And every once in a while, I just change out the chamois fabric on here. Looks like it's about ready to be changed out. It's like a great big piece that I got years ago when I was used to collect fabric. Now I collect fabric for a different reason, but I'm trying not to collect fabric because I already have too much fabric. But anyways, that's what I used to glue onto it. Do we want to add a little bit in here? I think so. Yeah, I'm going to add a bit more in there too. Especially like when the edges are dark. So I'm going to glue it on there, glue on glue stick first, and then I put on tacky glue, and I can see that wants to tear, but if it does, I can just puzzle it back on. Let's try that. Let's go back on there. Looks like it's going to be okay. I'm going to grab a clean piece of tissue so that I can just press on it. Oh, yeah, silly me. Don't put glue all over it. Leave Leave part of it dry, which I forgot to do. I remembered on the other two, but obviously not on this one. Mm, it's almost dry already. Yeah, I like that. And then this could have some 
coloring done to it or you could use a more colorful butterfly but I think with the bright colors in here and here I think I like it like that so I'm gonna leave that open to dry while I do the next thing which is adding you know I kind of like that bit of orange there but it doesn't really go with the seam or does it but maybe that's okay I just like it so or I could use this so it's not quite so glaring so what I'm gonna do here is I want to make a pocket and once again to cover up partly that but also because a nice tuck spot I'll fold it and when I do glue it down again I'm gonna not glue it right up against that seam I'll probably glue it about there so I've got that folded and yeah, so I might as well measure this part over here too yeah and then I can just I will take back to the, the paper cutter Remembering not to bonk the lamp. Pardon my stomach growling. It's not that it's hungry, it's that I've had lunch already. Lunch and coffee. Well, half coffee. I have a full strength coffee in the morning and then a half strength at lunch. So they don't have trouble sleeping later. Which side? Which side do I want to use? Oh, I think I'll use this side. I'm put it up like that. Yeah. What I want to do though is I want to make a little fold, teeny teeny fold mark so that I can cut a semicircle of where it's a reminder and ink this up too as a reminder to myself that that's a tuck spot. And then we will glue it on there. Looks like I did get that the right size. Tacky glue. Sweet, my cat's watching. I've never been interested in the glue, although that's not true. Her mom was when she was younger. She's not anymore now, she just wants these things. Well, I need to pick that up and put it in the garbage, even though she's over in the other chair sleeping. Her daughter is the one that's beside me. Her daughter's not generally one to eat weird things, but mom sure does. Let's just get rid of those right now. There, so not too close to the seam because you'll see why when I go to sew. And this here doesn't matter because I'll be putting something there. I'll be putting some washi tape there. There, so that's a tuck spot, and uh, looks like did I ink up the wrong side of that, or it just didn't show up very much. Well, that's all right. We just go like this. Well, no, not that one because I need that one. There, just go like this. Oh, I did ink it up. It's just not very visible. There. Hmm. I think before we start working on the outside, I like it when there's a element of surprise, like in one of them, I remember to do this. See, in this one, you open it up and then there's ooh, another tuck spot made out of bits of old paper. This paper's over a hundred years old. So I layered it up and then added this uh, die cut. It came from a crafting kit that, of course, I didn't use a crafting kit as a crafting kit. I just used the pieces. It was from the thrift store, so I can do that. So that's what kind of what I want to do here is get my basket of goodies and just find some 
old papers. Oh, I like the look of that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's just use this one. And what else could we use? Hmm. Could put that on it. piece of fabric Maybe that could go under here what we're creating is a, a tuck spot that's interesting uh-huh yeah so what I'll do is I will glue these together I think I'll ink up this guy a bit some ink on first. I only just recently noticed that this is coffee flavor, coffee colored. Yeah. Well, I love that color and I love coffee, but I can't believe it took me having that ink for over a year to notice it was coffee colored. My husband saw that uh, I just had one color of ink and he actually ordered me the set of Ranger ones. He's a sweetie. Yeah, Acts of Kindness. He likes to do Acts of Kindness and he really appreciates Acts of Kindness. So I tried to do an Act of Kindness the other day by, he usually does the, takes the recycles out and I'm not going to have anything super bright in there. I think that's good. And so I thought, well, I'm going to Empty the recycles for him. I'm going to keep chatting while I go over to the sewing machine and put this on because I think I'm not going to glue this first. I'm just going to... No, I'm not going to sew it on. I'm going to sew it sell. I'll just sew it and then I'll glue it on. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Anyways, I was going to do him an act of kindness by taking out the recycles so he wouldn't have to. And so... I was emptying it out into the big bin in the garage and he came along and a big smile when he saw what I was doing and then he started to help me pick up the ones that had fallen onto the floor and then I heard him go uh oh and he says that was my template he accidentally picked up the wrong piece of cardboard and ripped it up and it was a template for something he's working on and I don't know I know I that's probably not the best time to laugh but those are the funniest situations just you know things that weren't meant to happen like the blooper that I'm going to probably share on my stories about how I didn't use my um, paper cutter in the funny, the, in the best way. Anyways, he laughed too, and all, all's well that ends well. And I, I still got him his good books for having done him a, an act of kindness. I get stuck in routine, so to get out of my routine and do something random like that is, it shouldn't be a big deal, but it is a big deal for me, because it means I have to interrupt the flow of whatever it is I'm doing. But you know, that's love, right? That's real love. And he does it all the time for like everybody in the family. He's constantly stopping what he's doing to help somebody. So the least dumb... The least I could do is do that once in a while. So I'm going to bring my seam ripper over. Because what I like to do after I sew something is I got this idea from Natasha at Treasure Books. Is to bring the threads through the same side. And then you tie them. And if it doesn't work, well, sometimes they get a little tangled up back there. And so if it doesn't work, since I'm gluing this down anyways, I won't worry about it. Yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll tie these two. For the sake of the video, let's not make it not too long. I'm scared to look at the time to see how long I've taken, but we won't do that. And 
and I tie this. And I like to leave a little bit dangling. Hmm. Paper scissors, they don't want to cut that. But my fabric scissors, they will. Yes. And she's going to put this away. Right away in the drawer. And this, and this, and this have to leave. Even though Mama Cat's sound asleep on the chair. An ounce of prevention is worth uh, prevention of a vet bill, right? Not that I've had to take her in for any of those silly things yet. But I don't want to have to, so I'm going to be careful. Fabric is this where are you? There you are. You're where I, you're where these are supposed to be. There. The place for everything and everything in its place. Now. There. Very odd looking, but I don't know. It's cozy. I'm I'm used up I used up bits that were in the, the box. And then if you glue it down the side and along the bottom, we will have a cluster tuck, right? A cluster tuck. Mm hmm. Why not? Okay, so while that's drying, we can go work on. Uh, should I do the front first? Oh, right, I don't know what I need to do. I need to put a piece of washi tape here. So I have to decide which washi tape. And I don't have hordes of washi tape because I haven't been at this that long. But what would go? This would definitely go, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. It would also be nice to have something bigger on there. So I think I'll put this on. Yeah, kind of nature theme. So what I'll do is get some glue. Since it's going to be a wide piece, I can just put it straight down like that. This is going to strengthen the spine, give it some character. But we need the strengthening for when we want to sew in the signature, which can be done by hand or by machine. I did the other two by machine. Let's see, let's do that. I was gonna add some lace, so it doesn't matter if I got some glue left over. Oh good, we're getting all of that bird in there. Mm -hmm. Paper scissors. Sticky note. Let's see if there's any overhang over here. See how that's doing. Well, it's definitely a tuck spot now. We just have to decide what we want to put in there, but I'm getting distracted from this. Yeah, so that is. Oh, I got that one on straight. Yay. And don't worry if you don't get it on straight because, well, actually, I can see it's not perfectly straight. And I don't have to worry about that because we're going to add a piece of lace to it later. So now we want to add, I just want to put, because I want this to be able to fit into the junk journal, one page for the signature, like that. And in order to do that, I will need to pin it with some paper clips.
and I'm gonna hold that in place so I'll make sure it's into the fold good folded the paper with a really strong crease because that will help me see where to sew. I could do this by hand and but I'm looking at the video and I'm going nope I think I'm just gonna go use the machine but I can still talk while I'm using the machine. <laughs> And I put it on straight stitch because right now it's not on straight stitch. There we go. We're having a major rain happening outside. It's called Atmospheric River and they're not kidding. It's really, really raining. Hopefully it's snowing up in the mountains. The last time we had rain, the next day when it cleared up, could see that there's a lot of fresh snow in the mountains and we need that snowpack for our water supply in the summer. Because it looked really pretty to see the fresh snow. Again I'm going to bring my um, seam ripper over to pull the threads through. Oh, and I forgot to shine the light over there so I could make sure I sewed in a straight line. But hopefully that's not going to matter too much. That's another good reason to not glue the other things too close to that line. Gray space. God, that's one of my favorite words. drawer. Oh, I can imagine if I left that drawer open. Yeah. Can you imagine two cats with free access to the thread end drawer? Oh dear. That would not be good. If I leave a drawer open, they go in it and make themselves at home like, oh, mom, you, you gave us a new resting spot. That's how they end up cleaning a lot of the baskets in the house and boxes and things because if I leave it sitting out and it doesn't have anything in it or it doesn't have much in it, they just climb in and make themselves at home. Yeah, I can see how that one's crooked. So we'll have to fudge fold it there. But it's okay because we're not going for perfection, right? We're going for joy, the joy of creating. Oh, let me open that up. We got this here. We need a tag in here, don't we? Now what would go with these colors? but not be like too repetitive. Ah, see that goes, the blue. And, oh, this one, yeah, this one. It's already looking like it's tag size. I'll get my paper scissors, cut it into a tag shape. Ink it up a little bit. And I like to cut the corners on the bottom with this. So I'll cut it with this one. Yep. More chips for the cats. too. 
And now, let's see how she looks in the pocket. Sweet. And I could put a little hole there and have some, you know, something through her like that, which I think I might do later. But for the sake of this video not taking too long, I'm looking through my basket of bits to add to it for trim. Here's some antique lace. Should I put that on? Should I glue that on? Yeah, I think it looks really nice. So we're going to have a little bit left at the end, which you can trim after we glue it. So I'm just trying to decide which is a good side. I think that's the good side. So we'll put some of the stick glue down first, and then we'll add some tacky glue. The lace really makes things, doesn't it? Details, details really make a difference. And think of all the detail in creation it just makes it so beautiful so do I want to do the other way around like that no I want to do it this way don't pull it too tight just want it to be kind of natural the way it was the squiggliness of this kind of goes with the squiggliness of the vines there I wonder if my subconscious noticed that, even though I hadn't noticed it right away. Got my fabric scissors here. Looks like I'm cutting those thread ends, but that's okay because they're tied anyways. Put that in my basket. Hmm, I feel like this doesn't need anything more on the front. Like the other ones, I, I added an extra little bit. And I'm thinking this one doesn't need it. Yeah, I think this one doesn't need it. But let me just compare her to the other ones. Does she need it? Does it look nice having a little extra something on it? Okay, yes it does. All right, so find a piece of fabric scrap from the basket. I didn't use that kind yet today. Maybe I'll see if I can rip off a piece. If you tear it, then you get more character that. Put that back in the basket and this could go like up here. My goodness, the cats really do help me not to be too messy in here because it's just too risky. Unless I just not let them in here, but I got them for company. So why would I not want them in here? And Persians, Himalayans, they, they like to be with their mom. They like to be with her mistress or their master. They like to be with the family. They thrive when uh, they feel included. So that's why I have to keep this clean because I want to see them thrive. That does look better, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to put some stick glue on there. I think I've done some of this out of camera range and I'm very sorry. I, when I watch it later, to learn to do better next time, I think I'll have to set it up so that I don't do that. Like maybe have lines or something on my work surface so that I know.
Yeah, remember to watch the video that was before this one because it's got a flip through of a little giveaway journal. And all you have to do is like the video, comment, tell me which uh, season is your favorite, and if you're and be a subscriber. So that's pretty easy because December tends to be a busy time for people. Aha! Uh -huh. And I could add some, I could add a little bit of bling like I did on this one. Could maybe put something in here like one, two, three. But I think because I got the nature theme happening as well, I'm going to leave it. Yeah. Lots of journaling space in here, including on the back. Could maybe add a stamp or two in here, but I'm going to consider this done for now and say thank you thank you if you manage to stick with me for the whole thing thank you for watching and take care bye